What's up everyone, it's Prometheus, and today I'm adding to my long neglected playlist of coffee science videos with another pseudoscientific coffee tasting video. In the past, I've talked about this somewhat controversial topic of freezing coffee as a long-term storage solution, and in my experience, at least up to one year, it works pretty well. I've seen it with my own two eyes, tasted it with my own 10,000 taste buds, but if that's not enough, you can also refer to James Hoffman's video on the subject, or the undisputed king of freezing and vintage copies, the legendary George Howell. But as an ongoing experiment for myself, I've been freezing coffee here at home, and one sample in particular is about to hit two years today. So I figured I'd break it free of its plastic prison, brew it up on V60 and espresso, and talk about it with you, and do it all for science. There isn't anything particularly interesting or inherent about this coffee, at least that I'm aware of, but it is somewhat sentimental because it was given to me as a gift from my brother-in-law who visited Japan back in March of 2019. So that means this coffee was about a week or so old before it actually got to me and got into my freezer. As you can see, it's a medium to light roasted Kenyan coffee, and I thought this would be a great option to test the effectiveness of freezing coffee over a long period of time, because Kenyan coffees in particular are very unique and intense, and I want to see if it'll hold up in the freezer for two years. Now since I can't read Japanese, I don't know if there's any information on the label that gives any clues as to what it may taste like, but I'm just going to crack this open and find out for myself. First up, I'm going to brew some filter coffee on my trusted V60. The beans themselves smell slightly sweet and are a little woody and dry. After grinding it up, as you'd expect, the fragrances really kicked up, and there's some heavy milk chocolate, some baking spice, and some subtle citrus notes coming in towards the end. While brewing it up using my hybrid V60 recipe, I'm seeing a pretty decent bloom. I'd say it looks like the CO2 release of a coffee that's about one to two weeks old. On this brew, I gave it a bit longer of a bloom, about 45 seconds to my usual 30, and it created a super tasty cup. And just to be sure, I brewed it again with a slightly finer grind and a 30 second bloom, and it came out again with a very deliciously sweet and balanced cup with notes of chocolate, kumquat, and a juicy and clean finish. So that only leaves one other experiment to do, and that is the ultimate stress test for coffee, espresso. Once again, like the V60, nothing super special or unique here in terms of the preparation or the recipe of the shot. Since I know the quantity of this coffee is pretty limited, I dialed my niche to where I often find shots run best at about two weeks off roast, ran it through my trusty ESP cup, gave it a couple taps, tamped, and I was off to the races. It actually ran surprisingly well for a first pull, but it was a little bit slow. The brightness was amped up quite a bit, but it still carried a very sweet and flavorful finish, reminiscent of the notes in the V60 brew. After a slight grind change just making it a little bit coarser, the second shot ran right into the sweet spot at about 34 grams in 24 seconds. Taste-wise, the acidity was much milder and carried through those kumquat notes very nicely, and the base note of chocolate fades into a nice brown sugar-like sweetness. In terms of the way the shot looked, it looked like I would expect any washed, lighter roasted coffee to look after a couple weeks. It didn't have a ton of crema, but not zero, so it definitely came across as still a relatively fresh pull. So if I was out at a cafe and given this shot of espresso, I definitely wouldn't suspect that it was sitting in a household freezer between a Hot Pocket and a Lean Cuisine for two years. Now I'm sure, as per usual, there will be someone out there who thinks this is hogwash or gobbledygook or whatever word for nonsense you want to insert there, but in terms of storing coffee in the freezer, of course, things are going to vary. It's going to vary by your coffee, your freezer, and what you store it in, but in my experience, a basic coffee bag with a one-way valve and a Ziploc bag can keep coffee tasting good after at least one year and a vacuum-sealed bag for at least two. And even with those who may push back on me and whoever else says freezing coffee is okay, the saga will continue. I will persist because I have many, many bags of coffee still in my freezer, both roasted and green. So expect to see more content on that in the future. And of course, let me know what experiments you'd like to see when it comes to freezing coffee. So with that said, I'm gonna wrap this one up. Drop your thoughts, questions, and coffee stuff down in the comment section below. And of course, I'll see you next week.
And of course, a big thank you to my April Patreons, Ads, Jacob P, David W, Christopher, Squeegee, Roe, Brian, Lisa, Andre, Sean, Noel, Spookus, Mika, Samantha, Claire, Bound Coffee, Stephen, James K, Josh Horrison, Corey C, Curry, Jeff Roth, Joey N, Thomas B, UK Espresso, Tim, Jason C, Jerry, Matt, Ninja Warrior Coffee, Home Barista Coach, Counseling Memes, Testing123, Zachary V, Tyler F, Robert Underdunk, Jeffrey R, BJK Cafe, Chris M, Daniel P, Mike B, Brian M, Brandon B, Tyler M, Sebastian, Matthew C, JRC, Absolute, Stephen G, Alex T, Offensive, Jose Lauren, and Keefe, and of course, a big thank you to the barista and barback tiers. If you want any information on my Patreon, there's a link in the description and in the upper right hand corner right now. And of course, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that little bell button for notifications of new videos posted every Friday. Follow my Instagram at Prometheus for content throughout the week. My blog at Prometheus.com. My coffee at LittleGiant.coffee. And as always, stay caffeinated, Pony Boy. <laughs>